Uh, since everybody these days is talking about the future, I would also like to talk uh, about the future, but I would like to do it in a slightly different way. I think we may have cracked a trick that allows us to know the future, or at least come a long way towards uh, knowing the future. The trick is based on analyzing uh, past predictions, and as we know, predictions come in many forms. Uh, probably the most well-known is, of course, and the most stereotypical is the fortune teller staring into the crystal ball. But at the same time, equally, of course, predictions belong to science. Uh, this is a very complex mathematical algorithm known as the Coleman filter, which is used to project trajectories in order to help people with uh, navigations. This is another example, a mathematical uh, curve based on sun cycles to analyze the occurrence, to predict the occurrence of sunspots as it is used by NASA. Now, very importantly, the fortune teller and the scientists have one thing in common. They both get it wrong. <laughs> this is or was a prediction about Judgment Day, probably by religious maniacs. But this was another prediction. The Y2K, the combined uh, American military uh, and, and intelligence servants mobilized uh, to deal with the consequences of the year 2000s, consequences that essentially never happened. Let's look at the track record of predictions. Let's look at a, num let's look at a number of things uh, people have predicted. Here we are, 1876. The phone has too many flaws to be seriously considered as a means of communication by Western Union. A rocket will never leave the atmosphere, predicted in 1936, very generously, of course, retreated in 1969. The television won't last because people will soon get tired of staring at a plywood box every night, 1946. <laughs> We do not like their sound, and guitar music is out of fashion anyway. Grandpa recording, the studio that refused to sign up the Beatles. There is no reason, 1977, we go on. There's no reason why, why someone would want a computer in their house. Why would they? <laughs> HIV is a pussycat. The, th the list goes on and on and on and on. This is a very interesting one. It'll be years. Not in my time before a woman will become a prime minister, 1969. This is Margaret Thatcher entering politics. Clearly she was, was wrong. Let's, let's go on, another politician. From the depth of Western Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the East. This is a prediction from 1555 by Nostradamus in his Almanac Prophecies, uh, an, an almost an unfeasibly apt example of, uh, of foresight. Um, the stock market crash in 1929, predicted five years earlier by Edgar Case, who was actually a psychic. Uh, the iPad uh, predicted as the newspad in the film A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick, already in the 60s. Man will travel to the moon, predicted in the 19th century by Jules Verne. Here's another book of Jules Verne. The book talks about, uh, in the 19th century, talks about the future of Paris in the 20th century, and particularly talks about women uh, in, in Paris who will have turned, because of their attention to finance, have turned into cynical, ugly, neurotic uh, career creatures. Well. Uh, here's another one from the same book. A modern, uh, a geometric modern centerpiece will be built in front of the Louvre Museum in Paris. And that is freaky. <laughs> this, in a way, led us to wonder, uh, wh what is it about this seemingly random uh, collection of predictions, right or wrong? Can we make sense out of them? And what we started to do was build a website. The website is actually a very large database of past predictions. Uh, we collected thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, predictions, uh, basically from anything to the return of Christ to predicting the bankruptcy of Fanny, uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Uh, from the end of the world to the future of, of dishwashers. The website categorizes the predictions. Uh, what are these predictions generally about? Uh, five uh, subjects. Who generally 
make these predictions, generally five sources, which together sort of encompass anything and everything you can ever uh, predict. And here, an interesting conclusion starts to uh, emerge. We assume that every source simply predicts uh, about, the f about its own field of components, that every source limits its predictions to an area they supposedly know what they're talking about. So let's, let's, let's check that. Uh, the future of the car from the 1950s by General Motors, supposedly running on jet engines. This is a, this is a prediction about the future of the car by the car industry. Uh, but this is another prediction, essentially about cars being guided by electric devices uh, in the road. Uh, essentially, surprise, surprise, uh, predicted by the American light and power companies. Uh, and this is a prediction about the role of the car in the city uh, by Walt Disney, actually explaining Epcot, Walt Disney's theme park uh, towards the future. That is, in a way, interesting. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, a project for an expedition to Mars by Werner von Braun, the father of the Apollo rocket, and I believe also of the V1 and V2. Um, anyway, a rocket scientist talking about Mars, but this is another prediction about an expedition to Mars actually made by the American movie industry. This is a prediction about the computer from the 40s by the chairman of IBM. This is a prediction about the computer by Isaac Asimov, a well-known science, uh, science fiction writer in, in, in the 80s. So what we actually see is that rather than predicting about one's own competence, predictions are essentially a domain of promiscuity, where anything and everybody predicts essentially uh, anything and everything. Um, in order to come to terms with this, we, we, we built a system. The system is a matrix where we juxtapose the five subjects to the five predominant sources who make the predictions. And our large collection of predictions, we actually distribute it uh, according to the matrix, partially according to source, partially according to subject. And you get a very diffuse, pretty much scattered landscape uh, across this kind of imaginary uh, universe uh, of knowledge. The key question, I guess, is true or false. What we did with the website is that, in a way, the website uh, consists of an enormous amount of pages who are which are essentially standard forms which evaluate uh, the predictions in a number of fields. Time, uh, who made them, uh, what was the time they predicted about, and most importantly, of course, uh, it, it, it lists true or false. So let's go back to the previous two examples. Uh, clearly, the chairman of IBM was wrong about his own uh, subjects. I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. But Asimov, uh, when he made this quotement about computers being hooked up to libraries, allowing an answer from every home, essentially predicted the Internet and, of course, he was right. It isn't always that easy. Take this prediction from round about 1800. Horse-drawn coaches will be used in a tunnel under the English Channel. Now, the tunnel happened, but to my knowledge, no coaches are using it at present. So this is a prediction that is essentially true and false at, false at the same time. And this goes for very, very many predictions. Let's, let's look at another example. 1967, Futurama. Fingertip shopping, a video console will be channeled into the store of her choice where she can select wares by push button. What the wife selects will be paid for by the husband. All bills and transactions will be taken care of electronically. Now, what is interesting here is that an extreme foresightedness in terms of technological innovation is coupled to a, an assumption of completely stagnating uh, gender roles. So also here, Partially true, partially false. Uh, on that note, uh, I think this example uh, speaks for itself, as does uh, this one. There's another element about predictions. You can regard predictions as, as, as statements about the future, but often predictions are simply statements to other predictions. This is from Life magazine, 1970. Urban dwellers will have to wear gas masks to survive air pollution. From the Osaka exhibition in the same year, of course, the World Expo predicts an airtight, sealed-off living capsule. Uh, 
It predicts a house covered by a dome, which means that occupants need not worry about the outside world. Here's another one. A giant dome from, the, from round about the same date covering uh, Manhattan to regulate weather and reduce air pollution. Uh, simply kind of predictions as an example of an, of an escalating hysteria based on a scientific foresight. Here, the Earth is like a spaceship whose existence ends once its fuel runs out. Round about 1970, round about the time that actually the Club of uh, Rome published its very uh, famous report that predicted actually uh, the depletion of the Earth's natural resources, famously predicting that in 1992 oil, oil reserves will have been used up. Clearly false. But of course, apocalyptic predictions uh, about the world are, are very, very old. This is one from 400 AD. I think that's after Christ, but I'm sure there are older ones. Uh, anyway, the world ended many times. It will end in 1186. It ends 660 years after the rise of Islam. It ends in 1656. It will end by nuclear holocaust in, 16, in 1967. And it will end by another nuclear holocaust in 2003. Anyway, as many times as the world ends, sort of Christ returns. Christ will return in 500 AD. So AD is definitely after Christ. It's definitely after Christ. Uh, Christ will return a few more times. <laughs> but funny as this may seem, a similar mode of prediction is actually used in the realm of the economy because Christ will return as many times as the economy of Greece will suffer recovery. And the economy, let's look at the economy. Let's, 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 let's look at the track record of the economy. These are all predictions about the economy from prophecy, uh, the political, from the arts, from science, and from business. They invariably get it wrong, with the exception of a, pr of a few prophets. And that's not a very good track record. <laughs> but the track record is infinitely better than the track record of politics. <laughs> who simply always get things wrong. <laughs> we will bury you, is what Nikita Khrushchev uh, said. Well, I think we kind of buried him. Uh, and it seems that politicians only become accurate predictors once they cease to be politicians. Uh, this is Leon Trotsky, uh, after fo having fallen out of favor, uh, probably predicting this from Mexico, uh, where he predicts uh, the USSR to basically be toppled by, by an enormous bureaucracy kind of accurate. This is another communist uh, convert, George Orwell, uh, predicting that the Russian regime must democratize or, or, or perish, uh, similarly uh, accurate. And Orwell, in a way, brings us to literature. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. Uh, this is from 1984. Reality, however utopian, is something from which people feel the need to have taken pretty frequent holidays. Aldous Huxley, 1932. And these two examples kind of make you think, ultimately, whether predictions are anything else but literature. Whether the point of a prediction isn't the prediction itself. And if you look, uh, an interesting pattern uh, emerges. This is a graph that simply lists the amount of utopian novels uh, per year that looks, looks at optimistic ones and pessimistic ones. Uh, and, and, and what you see is that in optimistic eras like the 60s, a lot of utopian novels appear. Uh, but for instance, in the years of the Depression and during the war, a lot of dystopian novels uh, appear. So one can wonder whether actually predictions aren't statements about the present more than they are statements about the future. Let's look at another example. How uh, two countries saw their futures, the US and China. In the 1990s, the US was overwhelmingly positive about the future for future generations. China was not. In 2013, today, we see the completely opposite picture. Nevertheless, the US is in a very deep recession and things can only get better. China is suffering enormous economic growth and things cannot stay as good as they are. So therefore, one would in a way expect the opposite uh, result. But also here, it seems that nations, in predicting the future, simply assume the present to extend infinitely uh, into the future. So what have we learned, uh, in a way? What is, what is the trick? As I said before, 
one would expect, in a way, uh, the sources to be right about their own subjects. This is not the case. This is actually more what we found in terms of attributing right and wrong uh, to our database. Uh, what you see is actually that the arts are most accurate about predicting technology, science knows about culture, business somehow knows about humanity and the planet, never trust a politician, but you, prob <laughs> but you probably didn't do that anyway, and profits are expert uh, on the economy. This may be a, a slightly extreme uh, statement, but moreover, what this, this graph does, it says that probably answers lie in the most unexpected domain, that the right and wrong of predictions, once you make it a statistical given, uh, probably undermines the authority uh, of disciplines rather than uh, reinforce it, and that therefore it's an encouragement to maybe take the most insane statements, to maybe take the most unlikely uh, domains very, very, very seriously, and ultimately, maybe even the fortune teller. Thank you very much.